in this one we will be using a mechanical stimulator that simulates the actual moving parts that trigger the Speedwino so that we can physically see the inputs and resultant outputs of the different settings in Tuner Studio. We're going to start with the Spark side of things. So if you select Spark, go to Spark Settings, you get to this box. And if you look at Spark Output Mode and open the drop down box, there's a number of options. I'm going to explain the two main options, Waste Spark and Sequential. Waste Spark is cheaper and simpler than Sequential, which keeps the cost down for small engines. But if you use it on a large engine, you can run double the number of cylinders with the same ECU. The way it works is if you have two cylinders at top dead center at the same time on your engine, you can fire both at the same time on every revolution, even though a four stroke only needs one spark every two revolutions. And that will ignite the mixture in the cylinder with the freshly compressed mixture and harmlessly waste a spark on the cylinder with the valves open. Then one revolution later, and ignites the fresh compressed mixture in the other cylinder while harmlessly waste sparking in its paired cylinder. So effectively you can run two cylinders on one ignition channel. So with the four channel Speedwino you can run a V8 in waste spark mode. Sequential on the other hand fires each cylinder individually but only on every second revolution. So is stuck with the number of cylinders as ignition channels. Sequential spark has nearly no advantages over waste spark if the spark table is the same in both cases. But controlling individual cylinders might have a slight advantage. Like if one of your cylinders runs hot and is prone to pre-ignition, you can reduce the timing on that cylinder while advancing the ones on the other cylinders. But things like that are never a massive improvement. It's something like the race industry would use. Speeduino currently doesn't have this feature. So sequential is mainly used if each cylinder has an individual coil, like a coil on plug, COP. This will be the testing setup and procedure. This is the motor, this is the crank wheel, this is the cam wheel, this is the crank sensor, this is the cam sensor, and they go into the Speedwino's trigger channel. And any sensor we're not using we're going to unplug so you know it has no influence. The ignition output channels are then connected directly to an LED with the black wire to ground. And we're going to use that LED as a type of timing light to actually see what's happening. The first thing we have to do is tell Speedwino what trigger setup we are using. So it knows what numbers to use in its equations. And we do that with Tuner Studio. We still have our base tune from last tutorial. So I'm only going to change the settings that have to do with ignition. So we go to settings, engine constraints. And the first thing we want is engine stroke. I'm using four strokes, so that's correct. Then the number of cylinders. 4 is correct, so those settings are OK. These other settings here and here are for injection, which we'll look at later. Close that. Next is settings, trigger setup. First test will be a 12 minus 1 missing tooth crank wheel only. This is an optical setup where the sensor goes high when there's gaps, but goes low when the sensor light is blocked. So the 11 gaps and 1 block is equivalent to a 12 minus 1 normal wheel. We have the missing tooth, we want this 12, crank speed and one missing tooth. So that's correct. Now go to spark and spark settings and missing tooth crank wheel can only run in waste spark which is correct. But down here enable fixed and locked timing, we want to turn that on and set our angle to zero degrees. This bypasses the ignition table and makes us reference to everything as zero degrees. It basically locks the ignition so the sensor inputs can't change it. The Speedwino will now regard the edge of the first missing tooth as its zero point, but that might not be the actual engine's zero degree point. And if we look here, it'll be the leading edge of the first tooth. Don't worry about this secondary trigger or cam tooth because that's not connected. We burn that and restart our Speedwino. Mm -hmm. and we go to our bench and run our mechanical stimulator. Our motor is running and Tuner Studio reports about 800 RPM. Cylinders are paired in waste spark so two ignition channels are working. Our LED timing light is on ignition channel 1. Crank sensor plugged in. Cam sensor unplugged. Our LED timing light. Our timing mark on our crank wheel. Notice how big it is. Our timing mark on our cam wheel. Notice it's half the size. 
Let's temporarily make our timing marks more accurate. Go Spark, then Dwell Settings. Then when it says Running Dwell, we'll change that from 3 to 1. Burn it. Our ignition pulse is a lot shorter, so now our mark is a lot smaller. Our crank marker is not lined up with our stationary marker, so we'll have to adjust that. Earlier we told Tuner Studio the edge of the first tooth will be its zero point. Now we have to move that zero point to the engine's zero point. The way you do it is line up your timing mark to your engine's zero point, then you note how many degrees you rotate the crank wheel clockwise to get the edge of the first tooth to the centre of the sensor. This looks about 10 degrees. I don't know what you do in reverse rotation engines like 4G63, so you'll have to work that out. We punch 10 degrees into trigger angle, that's our offset. Burn that. It looks a touch out, so we'll try 13. 13 and burn. Looks close enough. This is the result of our missing tooth crank wheel in waste spark test. Crank wheel has a mark at top dead center, but nothing at bottom dead center. But cam wheel has a mark at compression top dead center and overlap top dead center. Test 2 is a 12 minus 1 missing tooth crank wheel but in sequential mode. And to run it in sequential we need a cam tooth. So we'll now plug in our cam sensor. This is effectively a 12 minus 1 forward slash 1. In Tuner Studio we go to spark settings and where it says waste spark we now change that to sequential. Then down in trigger settings we see single tooth cam which is correct. We burn that. Quick restart. And we start our stimulator. In sequential mode the ignition channels fire in numerical order to the number of cylinders you have set in engine constraints. We had four so all four are firing. Remember Speedwino fires in numerical order so you have to wire them to the cylinders that are in the firing order. Like channel 1 goes to cylinder 1, channel 2 goes to cylinder 3, channel 3 goes to cylinder 4 and channel 4 goes to cylinder 2. In sequential we have top dead center crank, top dead center compression on the cam, but no top dead center overlap. The way missing tooth sequential works is, the first missing tooth on the crank wheel after the cam pulse now becomes the zero point. We see a crank top dead center, but our cam shows compression top dead center. So this is compression top dead center. We rotate the crank wheel clockwise, and the mark on the cam is now telling us the crank wheel is at overlap top dead center. Rotate some more. The cam tooth hits the sensor and now tells Speedwino to look for the next missing tooth on the crank. Which is the edge of this tooth. And our trigger offset tells Speedy to fire 13 degrees before so it lines up with our engine zero point. That's why the ignition still fired at the same top dead center point, even though the cam tooth was in a random location. What happens now if I move the cam tooth 180 degrees? We put a small mark for our new top dead center compression point. We are at our new top dead center compression point. We rotate our crank wheel clockwise. Cam tooth triggers speed winner to look for the next missing tooth on the crank. Rotate more and our missing tooth hits the sensor. But you'll now notice our mark is at overlap top dead center. Mark is still at top dead center on the crank even though the cam tooth has moved. But if you look at the cam tooth, it says overlap top dead center. The Speedwino guys say the cam tooth can be anywhere. But as we've just seen, it makes a difference. I maintain it has to be in the 360 degrees before compression top dead center. And the only way I think they work their cam tooth anywhere is to change the trigger angle degree. This trigger angle degree is limited to minus 360 to plus 360. So we'll say minus 360 plus 13 is minus 347. Burn that. We still have firing at top dead center on the crank, but now our small cam mark is lined up with the marker pin. So we know it's top dead center compression. Let's now move the cam tooth 90 degrees so it stays within its 360 degree block. The block with the minus 347 trigger offset. Another new mark on the inside so we know where our 
compression top dead center is. Crank says it's still firing at top dead center. Cam says compression top dead center. And there's no marks anywhere else showing that it's only firing once per engine cycle. Now we're going to test dual wheel mode. In dual wheel mode we must have a cam tooth, which we have, but the primary wheel must have no interruptions, i.e. not a missing tooth wheel. So we have to remove our missing tooth. Also note I've put the cam tooth back to its original 13 degree offset that was in the first test. As seen here, the first thing you change for dual wheel is come up here, select dual wheel. We have 12 teeth and all this is blanked out, even the single tooth cam. If you go to the wiki, it says both pulses can run at either cam or crank speed, but sequential operation requires that the secondary pulse is located on the cam. Back to Tuna Studio. We are in sequential mode, so it has to have a tooth on the cam by default, so this is blanked out. And that means the primary wheel must be on the crank as default. So we burn that. Quick restart. Back to our stimulator. The first thing you'll notice the mark is not at top dead center, but has moved close to the sensor. And our top dead center compression cam mark has also moved. And the reason for that is when in dual wheel mode, the first tooth on the crank after the cam tooth is now the zero point. Which is this tooth near our top dead center mark. If you line up the top dead center mark, it looks like you turn the crank wheel 90 degrees to get the edge of that tooth to the sensor. But it's not that simple. Can you see the error? So we change the offset to 90. Burn that. We're close, but it looks like it's missing at 13 degrees. So 103 and burn. It's now showing top dead center on the crank, but the cam says overlap top dead center. Just note this cam wheel runs in reverse rotation to the crank, whereas on a real car it should be going in the same direction as the crank. But you should be able to work it out from this. If you line up your crank top dead center and your cam compression top dead center, it's how many degrees the crank wheel turns before the cam tooth hits its sensor. So we rotate our crank clockwise. That's 360. And that looks like the 103. So the amount we rotated the crank wheel was 360 plus the 103. You go 360 plus 103 equals 463. But since we can't go over 360, we have to subtract that from 720. So to get our number, we minus 720, which is our one engine cycle in crank degrees. And we get minus 257. So we punch in minus 257, burn, we now have top dead center on the crank and no other marks, and compression top dead center on the cam and no other marks. If you go to the dual wheel wiki, nowhere does it mention this will run in waste spark, but if you think about it, it's like a missing tooth, only the missing tooth is on the cam, so the primary wheel doesn't need a missing tooth, and is uninterrupted. Change this to waste, burn that, restart, back to the stimulator. We have top dead center crank and no other marks, and we have compression top dead center and overlap top dead center. The next part will be cam trigger wheels.